Three, two, one. Good morning. I am Kenya McDuffie, Council Member for Ward 5 and Chair of the Council's Committee on Business and Economic Development. Today is Monday, July 12th, 2021, and we are convening this meeting virtually via Zoom. The time is 11.05 a.m. and I'm calling to order this additional meeting of the committee. For the record, I'd like to note that we have a quorum which consists of Ward 2 Council Member Brooke Pinto, Ward 3 Council Member Mary Che, Ward 6 Council Member Charles Allen and myself. Today, the committee will consider the following measure, Bill 24-236, the Child Wealth Building Act of 2021. Now, I introduced this measure on May 3rd, 2021, and it was referred to the Committee on Business and Economic Development on May 4th, 2021. The committee held a public hearing on the bill on May 25th, 2021. If passed, this bill, uh, I think would be one of the most significant steps this District of Columbia government has uh, taken to chip away at the city's stark racial inequities that exist. Do I need to start over the recording and just start it? You're live on cable and we're recording on Zoom, uh, YouTube. Got it, okay. I'm gonna continue then. This bill would give, um, if passed, this bill would be one of the most significant steps the District of Columbia government has ever taken to chip away at the stark racial inequities that exist in our city. There are approximately 9,500 children born annually in the district and roughly 20% of all children in DC live below the poverty line. This bill will give every child born and covered by Medicaid a district sponsored trust fund. The government would add annual deposits to each account, the amount depending on the family's household income. Upon turning 18, the child may withdraw those funds which would include at most $25,000 to invest in their future by paying for continued education, purchasing or starting a business, buying a home, or even jumpstarting their retirement investments. Back in 1952, my grandparents bought a home in the stronghold community of Washington, DC and Northeast. Only four years after the Supreme Court ruled that racially restrictive covenants were unconstitutional in the landmark case, Shelley v. Kramer. 69 years later, my wife and I are raising our two daughters in the same home in stronghold. I share this because home ownership has and continues to be one of the most effective ways for families to generate wealth in the United States. Yet for many black and brown Washingtonian, home ownership, as well as entrepreneurship and higher education remains out of reach in no small part because black families lack the wealth to afford these opportunities. That is because most wealth in this country is inherited, not earned necessarily. Put another way, wealth begets wealth. Here in the nation's capital, a white family's median net worth is approximately $284,000, 81 times higher than the median net worth of a black family, uh, which is approximately $3,500. Over time, this disparity has only gotten worse. It's worth noting uh, that this wealth gap and many of the racial inequities that exist across practically every indicator of success in the District of Columbia did not occur by happenstance. They are the direct uh, result of centuries of things like slavery, Jim Crow segregation and government sanctioned discrimination with practices such as redlining, restrictive covenants and deliberative undervaluing of black owned assets. Government has played an active role in systemically extracting wealth from black and brown Americans and hamstringing the ability to build and grow their own wealth. And this bill is an example of government playing active roles in redressing uh, some of the challenges that have created and remain in our society. Simply increasing funding for the same programs isn't always the best way to address the status quo. And I firmly believe that one of the ways to address these monumental inequities is by giving more residents financial means to buy a home, start a business or pursue education. If passed, this legislation would make uh, trying to achieve the American dream a little bit more imaginable and obtainable for thousands of future District of Columbia residents. And so uh, I hope that the council's full support of this measure will, will happen and I hope that this committee will support it. And I hope that um, we can keep moving progress in the trying to achieve racial equity in the District of Columbia. Long statement, but I'm gonna stop here and ask, is there any discussion on the measure? Councilmember Che. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Chairperson McDuffie. 
Uh, thank you and your staff's work on this legislation, which I will be supporting enthusiastically. Um, and uh, it's an innovative and important approach to uh, the situation that you described in terms of uh, the uh, racial disparity uh, in our um, in our district and you know, really throughout the country. Um, the wealth of a white household, as you pointed out, is more than 80 times the median wealth of a black household. Uh, and this will begin to begin to address uh, some of that. Um, and uh, it's also something that's in line with initiatives that have been adopted in other jurisdictions, such as uh, New York City and Connecticut, as well as legislation introduced in Congress by Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey. Now, um, the legislation will require a significant investment, uh, cost 32 million over the four-year financial plan and about 47 million a year uh, in the 18th year, 2039, based upon current trends. Um, and it's going to require continued investment without necessarily an immediate tangible uh, effect. As the years pass, I, I just, I just want to put this out there. I just want to remain hopeful that the council and the executive will commit to seeing the program through so that its benefits, its wonderful benefits uh, to, subsequent, uh, to a subsequent generation uh, will uh, manifest. So uh, at that, uh, thank you again, Council Member uh, McDuffie, Chairperson McDuffie, and I look forward to supporting this bill. Thank you, Council Member Chair. Any further discussion? Council Member Allen and... Thanks, Council Member McDuffie. Um, let me just say, I, I really appreciate you moving this forward. Um, you know, you, you and I have talked a good bit about how we, we don't find ourselves today uh, from the result of one thing or something that happened overnight. It's decades and decades and decades. And I think what you're putting forward is a, um, a very intentional, but also a very long-term strategy uh, that can really have significant and transformational changes uh, for residents in our city. And, and I'm, I'm really grateful that, that you're putting this forward and it sounds like this committee is gonna be, uh, be supporting that. And then of course the hard work to make sure it's in the budget. Um, I, you, know, you were sharing the story about your parents' um, home and I, I think that's such a, a, an important part of the story. I, when you were mentioning that, I couldn't help but think for myself. Um, you know, I, when I was in my mid twenties, I had the ability to be able to, um, to purchase my first home. And, and I'd, I'd worked and scrapped up and saved a little bit, but um, I couldn't do it but for the help of my parents, of my aunt, who were able to, to squirrel away and, and give me a little something that helped me make sure that that happened. And my parents were by no means uh, wealthy. My, my mom worked retail till 11 o'clock at night every day. Uh, my parents worked hard, but as, as someone who, has, certainly has a certain amount of and significant amount of privilege. Um, that that ability to be able to help get into a home um, at that time in my life couldn't have happened but for that generational um, support that took place from probably their parents to them and then them to me. And I know that that will also then be paid forward to my kids. Um, and and that type of investment allowed me to be in the space that I am now. So um, I, I think that for everybody listening and trying to think about why this is important and also realizing it's not going to change the world tomorrow, but it is part of a significant long-term strategy to, to change historical wrongs. Uh, it, it's incredibly important. And I hope that those who have had fortunate opportunities like myself um, can reflect on their own experiences and realize how important something like this can be. So um, just really appreciate this moving forward. Uh, I appreciate your words and, and I'm, I'm really proud to be supportive of this. Uh, proud to, to have my name uh, associated with this bill and appreciate your leadership in bringing this forward. So thanks, Mr. McDuffie. Thank you, Council Morale, and uh, especially for sharing that. Uh, also a personal note, I appreciate that. Council Member Pinto. Thank you so much, Chairman McDuffie. And I'm glad to see, uh, looks like Councilmember Allen is outside of the Capitol with no fencing, which is a wonderful thing to see. Um, but thank you very much for your leadership in the Child Wealth Building Act. I really agree and I'm enthusiastic about it because I think this can be really transformational in closing the racial wealth gap that we see in DC, which is just um, unfathomably disparate and, and how we continue to see those, those numbers bear out. Um, I know that this will help us make valuable investments in our children's futures 
and in the future of the District of Columbia. And I really appreciate your comments, Chairman McDuffie, around it's not always about just adding to existing programs, but trying something new and investing in our next generation of young people um, and thinking outside the box and, and how we can address these disparities. I really applaud your leadership in this area. Um, I know that my constituents and neighbors and I are all very passionate about addressing poverty and homelessness that we see in our community. And as we continue to fight for immediate solutions for our residents experiencing poverty and homelessness, which are disproportionately experienced by people of color, we know that we have to also make long-term investments to prevent these issues from future generations. And I know that by investing in this program, we can start to build wealth for families who have been systematically excluded from wealth building opportunities by decades of discriminatory government policies. And the children who benefit from this program will be able to make valuable investments towards their long-term well-being. And putting these funds towards vocational and academic pursuits, investing in business or starting a business of their own, buying a home. I know that DC residents will build wealth not only for themselves, but for generations to follow and it will pay dividends for our city. So I'm very proud to join you, Chairman McDuffie, and our colleagues on this important bill and this important work to address the systemic racial injustices that have resulted in the vast inequities we still see in our city. And I know that this law will serve as one piece of that foundation as we move forward. So thank you again for your leadership. I'm looking forward. I'm proud to support this bill today. Thank you, Councilman Pinto. Thank you, Drew each of you for your statements. There have been, well, let me just ask, is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, I move the draft committee report in print with leave for staff to make technical and conforming changes. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have been unanimously. Other folks who are present and voting, the measure is approved. Uh, there being no further business before the committee, the time is now 11.18 a.m. in this uh, meeting it was adjourned. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Kenyon. Congrats. Congratulations.